What's up guys, welcome to the channel. On this video, we're gonna talk about going super sonic. And I've seen some other fighter pilots out there and they always are like, it's a non-event. Yeah, it's a non-event. Doesn't, uh, doesn't really do anything for me. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a little number clicks over in the HUD and you're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> what? what? Please, please stop saying that. Please stop saying that and don't believe that because here's what it actually feels like. This is what goes on in my brain when I see that little number click over to 1.0. So there you go, that's what going supersonic feels like inside my brain because you're in a multi-million dollar fighter jet breaking the speed of sound. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about what going supersonic, what is actually happening, and then I'm gonna tell you three stories about going supersonic that I think are just gonna give you the reference and the idea of what it feels like to go supersonic. But before we do that, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and poof, dominate that like button for me. That would help me out a lot. It'll help me grow this channel. Believe it or not, it actually puts it in front of more people. I would just greatly appreciate it. So it's totally free. Thank you for doing that. So when you go supersonic, you're essentially outrunning the sound waves that your jet is producing. Your little fighter jets out there, it's just putting along and it's producing these sound waves. And essentially what you're doing is you're building up those sound waves in front of you as you get close to that sound barrier. And then boom, you pop through the sound barrier, which is a change in pressure. And that creates the explosion type sound that you would hear on the ground or in the jet behind the jet going supersonic. I'll tell you about that here in a second. But the speeds for it are roughly 770 miles per hour at sea level. Again, can you see why I'm so excited about going supersonic? Even if it is just a little number in your heads up display that clicks over, you're going 770 miles an hour, bro. Come on. <laughs> if you extrapolate that, extrapolate, yeah. See mom, I can use big words too. <laughs> if you extrapolate that out, it's about 660 miles per hour if you're up at altitude at about 35,000 feet, which is where you're typically more likely to go supersonic. There's a quick story I'll tell you about a guy who was getting his certification at 100 feet to fly low level, and he was going supersonic. He happened to look over because he thought he saw another aircraft in his airspace, and when he looked over, he accidentally pushed forward slightly and then slowed down a little bit, and he went underneath the speed of sound, which threw him forward and then he pushed the stick forward even more and he said he bottomed out at like 15 feet above the desert deck and then he was able to recover. But that's how fast things can happen when you're going supersonic and when you decelerate and you go back through that barrier, there's a lot of things that are happening that are gonna make you slow down really fast and that's what kind of pushed him forward. And then it's important to remember that if that plane is flying directly at you, directly at you, then you're not gonna hear anything because all the sound is happening behind that aircraft. Just like when you're in that cockpit and you punch through, it's gonna get pretty dang quiet in there. So before we go any further on getting into my stories, I, th I think we can all agree going supersonic is awesome and it's just this incredible feat of human aviation that we should all be celebrating. And that's how I went into it when I was able to go supersonic for the first time, I was in a little T-38 and I'm gonna step back before the flight and I'm gonna tell you about my instructor and what he said to me. He was this awesome German guy. I went to Euronato Joint Jet Pilot Training. Did I tell you I was a pilot? Yes, uh, before we go any further, I want everyone to know I am a pilot. Ah, okay, I feel better now. <laughs> so when I was briefing with my instructor, he was like, Look, Ryan, uh, we're about to go supersonic in a jet that was built in the 1960s. So not, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but um, this thing could completely fall apart once we uh, you know, cross the sound barrier. So don't worry about it. You know, don't, don't stress out about it. But yeah, it could completely fall apart. I'm like, 
okay, thank you. And then he continued and he said, if the jet happens to start falling apart around us as we're going supersonic, wait until we're subsonic. So until you feel us go back through that barrier before we eject, because if we eject supersonic, really, really high chance that we're both gonna die. So there we were, we blasted off after my instructor puffed about three cigarettes and uh, I'm just sitting there like, all right, could, could be my last flight, but I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of this thing. And we we're up at about 29,000 feet over the Texas desert. And it was just a, this surreal moment when I see 0 0.99, 0 0.99, 0 0.99. And it's just like, it's hard to break through it. And you kind of feel a little bit of resistance because those sound waves are piling up in front of your jet and then Boom, we popped through it and the jet just kind of got quiet and I kind of heard the wind rush a little more. And it was just this surreal moment where he's like, hey man, we're supersonic, we're supersonic, bro. I was like, yes, like this is amazing. Like one of the most incredible moments of my aviation career because I knew at that point, you know, I was in the mock club and it was just a really special moment. Second story that I'll tell you about is in my F-15E. I climbed up to about 53,000 feet and then I started downhill and I treated it like a roller coaster. So the F-15E has these conformal fuel tanks on it so it can be a little harder to get going fast. She's a big girl, she's a big girl. She needs a little bit of encouragement to get going faster. And so I pushed it over and I started riding like I was on a roller coaster to get as fast as I could. I got up to about Mach 1.4 and it was just this amazing moment over the Idaho desert and I just looked down and I found this canyon and I was like, I'm gonna ride this thing supersonic all the way down into a low level and then start flying a low level. So as you get lower and lower, it's harder to stay supersonic. So by the time we got down into the low level, it was like just barely supersonic and then I went down to like 0.99 and you kind of feel the resistance as you punch through. But the earth is moving so fast past you when you're supersonic or close to supersonic at low level. Just amazing, amazing experience. Again, one of those that I just will take with me for the rest of my life. All right, the last story that I'm gonna tell you about was eight F-16s going supersonic together. Yeah, um, this is one that makes me feel really cool. Um, do, do you think I'm cool? Do you guys think I'm cool? Yes. But seriously, this was one of the most amazing supersonic experiences I've ever had. We were out over the Atlantic Ocean, eight Thunderbird F-16s, and we were like, hey, have we ever gone supersonic uh, with all of us out here? Answer, crickets, crickets, crickets. And we're like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so we're in close formation, and I don't think this has ever been done with this many airplanes as far as I know, but what I notice is we, we start getting closer to that barrier. We're like, 0 0.97, 0 0.98, 0 0.99. I started to feel those compressed waves coming off the airplane that was in front of me and next to me. And I was like, whoa. And it was like a bow wave from a ship that was pushing me away from that plane. It was just this amazing, like crazy experience. I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'm glad it's pushing me away and I'm not like somehow getting like pulled into that somehow. So it pushed me away a little bit and I spread out and then I, all of a sudden we crossed the sound barrier essentially at the same time and I heard like what sounded like a pop, uh, like this weird popping sound that came from the jets that were in front of me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So I looked out over the ocean, saw all eight of us, you know, in formation, going supersonic, and it's something that I will never ever forget. Just a surreal, incredible moment. Made me really proud to be up there. So, so excited you guys got to hear about these stories because, you know, again, now I think we we're all on the same page. Going supersonic is amazing. And if anybody tells you it's not, you should be like, okay, bro, you know, maybe you need to assess your life decisions. <laughs> So even if you can't join the mock club yourself, hopefully this video has given you that same feeling and just an idea of what it's like to go supersonic. So now you know, because the more you know. Thanks for being here guys. Please like, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.